haven't gotten quite such an applause before. I've done a lot of things, but this is the first time I feel like I've done something worthwhile. Uh, uh, Shah Rukh needs no introduction, but uh, he is one of the most popular and acclaimed actors in India. Uh, he has done a lot of things. He's not just an actor. He's a producer. He's a philanthropist. Uh, he has been given the Padma Shri Award by the government. He has starred in over 50 films, started his career in 1992 with Divana. Uh, most of you probably know this better than me. <laughs> and uh, he has also won the UNESCO Award for all his uh, philanthropic work as well. Uh, they had a great show last night. A bunch of my friends were there. And Shahrukh just told me it was their last show. And so they partied hard late last night. So he's probably a bit tired, but I'm very, very glad he's here. So let's welcome Shahrukh onto the stage. <laughs> This is, this is overwhelming, first of all. Uh, I never expect. Thank you, I love you too. <laughs> uh, you've done such a diverse range of films. Uh, what's the most challenging role you've done? Why? Can you talk a little bit about that? It's always the next one. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, it's never the one that I've done, because if I've done it, then it's over and done with. <laughs> and uh, however badly I may have done it, but it's no longer a challenge. An actor, I don't know. No role is difficult, because I don't, uh, um, you know, I, I don't have a method that I follow. I just take instances from life, meet people, and I meet so many people, and I love people. I love the hugs, I love to kiss them, I love to talk to them, and uh, yeah, they, yeah, we're doing the kisses afterwards. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so I, I, I just get to know people, and then somewhere down the line, uh, whenever a role is given to me, I kind of take from life and, you know, use it. And yeah, sometimes it's over the top, sometimes people think it's too simplistic, but I think it reaches out to everyone, touches everybody's hearts, and people identify with it. So films like Chuck, they were nice, Swades. There's Dil Wale Dulhaniya Le Jayenge. And um, <clears throat> I think uh, in the last video, I like Dawn, I find him very sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Three things I really like. I like entertainment, I like children, and I like sports. And these are three things that really turn me on. Uh, nothing else, actually. I, I'm not much of a sightseer. I'm not much for travel. I'm very boring. I'm very, very boring. If there are three things that I like, it's like watching films or video games, um, or uh, you know, watching sports, or children. I love children. So whenever there is a thing that I can involve myself now, because I've kind of done well for myself and I have a little extra money. So I, uh, whenever there's something, I get an opportunity to invest in any of these things, uh, I always do without thinking of the business aspect of it. So business-wise, I don't know if they're doing well or not. My team is here, they'll tell you. Um, I have to keep working hard and bringing the money in. But VFX was part of entertainment. Uh, IPL was because I like sports and I really wanted to play. I wanted to be a football player or a hockey player. And, uh, uh, it sounds very pompous. When I couldn't become a player, I thought, let me just go ahead and buy a team instead. <laughs> uh, but I, I did That's for my the way kids. I think as well. So, no. Yeah, I just said, let's go. Let's go and buy a team. My kids, <laughs> my kids liked it. We were sitting one day and they said, we should have a league team because of the English Premiership League and all. And I just went and bought it. And I remember I, we were to bid for it the next morning at 11 o'clock. And the bidding was very high, much more than I, can, I could afford or I still can afford. And all big corporates were doing it. And I was awake and I was hoping somehow my bid is not accepted because I didn't have the money. So I just uh, went ahead and after I bought it also, we lost so many years and so pathetically <laughs> that I became very sad. <laughs> the business was bad and the game wasn't being won and it's been a roller coaster ride. But you know, uh, I stuck around with it for three years now and uh, five years and some of things have turned. Because I truly believe, and some of you are younger here and you should know this, I don't want to sound uh, philosophical and as if I'm giving you a lecture, but uh, just when you think things are going to go wrong, if you hold on to them, they kind of turn around. Just that last brink is always the most important one. And I think for India especially, it's very important that the youngsters are educated if you want to change the country because we have everything going for us if we are just educated a little more or have access to education. So I would request everyone who's working at Google, figure out something specific because you're the intelligent one and smart ones and the fun ones, uh, figure out some uh, specific things for Indian education so that it reaches uh, deep inside the heartland of India because we need kids like you uh, coming here and ruling the world.
uh, Deepika, as you all know, uh, started with Om Shanti Om. So I like I like to show off and be pompous and take the credit for the fact that I made her, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, which which I can say uh, openly. And and today, unfortunately, uh, she won't be able to sing because her voice is gone. She's uh, otherwise she would have. Normally, she does a full Bharat Natyam as soon as she comes from she that part of it. She does a whole Arangetram and all, but she won't be able to do it. But but very honestly, uh, just to see all the desis out there is way cool. <laughs> It's, 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 I mean, I don't, I don't mean to sound um, too much of a nationalist, but it's just fantastic to see that you guys are literally running the world, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we do take uh, questions which people have all submitted, both internally and externally. And uh, the most popular question was, uh, throughout your career, who has been your inspiration for each of you and why? So if you could talk about that. Me? Um, Um, yeah, my my um, eternal inspiration has been. Um, <laughs> so um, yes, for me, it's always been my father, and um, in whatever I do, uh, anything. That, yeah, I, I love him too, and um, he's actually very jealous that I'm here today. Um, yeah, he's he's more of a, a computer geek than even me. So uh, actually. He must be blogging right now as we speak. So, uh, so yes, it's always been my father. I think just for not just his professionalism, uh, but just the kind of human being that he is. Um, you know, his sense of morals and values are things that I've always admired, and I aspire to be like him. And uh, whatever I do in life is is always for my parents. And uh, so they've they've you know I think my parents and have been my inspiration always. Uh, no, I, I get inspired by, I've always said this and, uh, and it, it may sound a little strange, but I get inspired not by special people, I get inspired by ordinary people. I find uh, it is special, it's not special to be special, it's very special to be ordinary. And I see people who achieve so much with such little uh, facilities at hand, I get very inspired by that. In terms of big people, of course my, my parents died early, so, uh, but, but they were very good teachers. So some of the people I've liked may, may sound a little odd, but Muhammad Ali, I like the boxer. Oh, there you I, go. I really get inspired by his story. I get inspired by the story of Mother Teresa. And uh, I've, I've never had the opportunity to meet either of them, but uh, whatever little I've read, and I make it a point to read about them. And that's why maybe sometimes I come across a little arrogant, because of Muhammad Ali, not Mother Teresa. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I like the way he has uh, led his life. And, uh, but more than that, I think I just get inspired. You know, I, I find when I meet people, I ask them, you know, how, how do you come here for the shoot? And they say, we wake up at 5 a.m., we take a local train, we've cooked food, we've dropped the kids to school, and now we've made it here at 8 o'clock, and when we pack up at 8, chances are we don't make it back home till 4 a.m. again sometimes. And I get really inspired by ordinary people. And uh, that inspiration I take that I've, got, I've gotten fortunate now, and I'm no longer ordinary, and I should retain that ordinariness around me to be able to achieve a little more. I'm, I'm, I'm very, very shy, uh, so, but I don't know, uh, okay, I'll try and shoot, I'll hide behind. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I'll start blushing and all, so. 